Good evening, I'm Sherry Allen, new patient coordinator with the Holtorf Medical Group. I'm happy to introduce Wayne's World of Medicine with Dr. Wayne Whiteman. Tonight's topic is men's health and the benefits of testosterone. If your man is losing his muscle mass, muscle strength, motivation, analytical thinking, initiative, sense of well-being, then you might want to have him watch this as well. Dr. Whiteman specializes in balancing hormones for men and women, thyroid disorders, infectious diseases, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, and heart disease. Stay tuned, and the webcast will begin in just a few moments. Hello and good evening. I'm Dr. Wayne Whiteman. Um, this evening we're going to be talking about uh, male health with a focus on testosterone and I'm also going to discuss some of the new things that we're doing here in the office, namely pulsed electromagnetic therapy, um, bio -laze, hot laser therapy, um, external uh, counter pulsation treatments. I'm also going to talk about um, ozone and um, lastly a brief comment about uh, the ultrasounds that we're doing here in the office. Um, I'm Wayne Whiteman. Um, my background is originally I was a pharmacist, um, then I was in emergency medicine, that's my specialty, and I did that for many, many years. We won't count the number. And I've been doing um, this medicine here at Holtorf Medical Group for the last 10 years. Um, so that's pretty much my background. So what about male health? Many people nowadays are living to be a hundred, but to me there's no point in living to be a hundred if you spend the last 20 years in a nursing home. So we want optimal health. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, mostly testosterone today with a focus on um, that for male wellness. Um, one of my patients that um, kind of leads to all of this um, was, came in one day and said, you know, I'm not, supposed to, I'm not sure if I am supposed to be here because most of the stuff on your website is about ladies and their comments. Um, but he said, I'd like your advice. He said, I have, I'm a lot more tired. I've lost a lot of muscle. I have a lot less endurance. Um, so I said, actually, 25% of my patients are men, and that means 75% are ladies. Um, I won't ignore you ladies today, but mostly I'm going to talk about men with a few comments um, that I'll um, add in later. Um, guys, we, us guys aren't very good at, at coming to the doctor. Um, most of my patients um, that come in that are men, I'll ask why they're here and they'll say, well, my wife, my girlfriend, my mother um, made me come. Actually, ladies are 99% accurate in knowing if their guy is low in testosterone, which we'll talk more about. Um, Male wellness, it's about energy, balance, vitality, um, strength, um, happiness, um, and, and part of our overall wellness. What I like to do when somebody comes in is do a thorough history, um, do a physical exam, and a very complete laboratory evaluation. In the labs, I like to check out um, thyroid, adrenals, testosterone, growth hormone, DHEA, pregnenolone, um, immunity. Um, cholesterol, diabetes, prediabetes, insulin resistance, um, being pretty thorough in all of that and reviewing all of these things with the patient. So what about testosterone, which is our, our main topic for today? Um, I want to create an awareness of the problem, um, encourage screening for um, testing, um, it's primarily a clinical diagnosis. What's good for one patient may not be good for another. Um, doing the full laboratory investigation, talking about our options, um, how to treat, and um, benefits, side effects of that, um, and follow-up um, laboratory evaluations, and discussing potential complications and um, um, side effects. So um, slide number two, um, questions. What is normal testosterone? What is optimal testosterone? At what ages um, to look at these numbers? What are the risks of low testosterone? Um, why are we deficient in testosterone? Um, and how do we recognize this and how do we treat it? That's the main things that we're going to talk about. So what is normal? Well, the term normal should be discarded because there is no such thing. 
we talk about rather um, what is deficient, low range, mid range, optimal, or excessive. And what is optimal for one person is not the same as for another. Um, and it really is a clinical diagnosis. Ever since um, 1952, um, the normal in a young male was up to 1400. Now the normal is about 1200. What studies have found is that we are um, having less testosterone even in same age men. And this is an environmental, it's not an evolutionary um, issue. Um, since World War II, we've introduced about 80 to 100,000 new chemicals. And these things, many of these things are, are harming um, our health. Um, and a lot of um, xenoestrogens that are affecting um, testosterone and estrogen as well for both men and females. Testosterone normally decreases 1% a year after the age of 35, um, but most of us are even starting out lower than we ever used to because of all these um, chemicals in our environment. It um, takes five enzymatic steps for testosterone to be converted from um, progesterone, or from rather cholesterol, sorry. And many um, of the chemicals that we get exposed to affect these steps. So we are not getting old, um, we're starting out older, uh, as a matter of fact. And another thing is most men don't know what they should feel like. Um, they accept um, being tired and just call it getting older and accept that when they don't know how they should really feel. A study um, in 2011 um, of men the age of 19 to 40 showed the average testosterone was 723. That means that if you're under 700, you're below average. I don't want to be below average. I want to be optimal. Um, the reference range, how do we look at reference ranges? We take 100 patients um, and we use two standard deviations, which is 95%. So 95 people out of 100 are put in a big wide range called normal. That means only 2.5 people or percent are called high and 2.5 people or percent are called low. Everybody else is told they're normal. Um, but it's key to be optimal um, at the top end of the range, at the top 25 percentile. Those that have low testosterone are much more prone to a lot of medical issues such as diabetes, prediabetes, ischemic heart disease, um, and it's actually very dangerous to be low. Um, it's well known now that a level less than 300 is very dangerous for us guys. We don't live as long as we should. We can die even 10 years earlier. Testosterone is crucial for the bones, so if we lack testosterone for men and women, we're much more prone to osteoporosis. Um, we're much more prone to cardiovascular disease, of heart attacks and arrhythmias. And I'll talk more about this study that came out last fall um, and discuss that in more detail. What chemicals um, are affecting the hormone manufacture? All the phthalates that are in plastics, uh, pesticides, fungicides, bisphenol, bisphenol A, PCBs from farm salmon, dioxins. A recent study last year in patients um, uh, farmers, for example, that were using a lot of pesticides, they were much more depressed. Um, all these chemicals, it's hard to avoid them, um, but we need to try and also do um, techniques of detoxification. Other important tests that I will also want to check would be estrogen, DHT, DHEA, pregnenolone, growth hormone, which I call adult repair hormone, your CBC, the thyroid, adrenal glands, vitamin B12, vitamin D, and PSA in men over 40. Why don't we treat? Well, many don't suspect this problem. Men don't go to the doctor uh, very um, often. Um, men aren't supposed to complain. Cultural ignorance. Um, doctors don't ask or investigate. When doctors do investigate, they maybe don't know what to do. And the conventional treatments of uh, commercial preparations like Androgel and um, Testament, those sorts of things actually don't work very well. It's almost pointless to give them. Uh, medical education is lacking and again the importance of this issue usually isn't recognized. What are the benefits of testosterone if you're low? Um, 
improved mood, improved attitude, improved motivation, improved memory, improved um, social interaction, increased energy, increased physical strength and stamina, increased sexual function if it was low, improved response to exercise, decreased musculoskeletal pain. Actually, your testosterone is 10 times more effective at, at decreasing pain. It's a, a central response. Um, Patients that are on narcotics, for example, are going to have a very depressed uh, LH level and they're um, much more prone to have pain and testosterone will reverse that. Um, improve sleep with taking testosterone and let patients feel the way they're supposed to feel. And earlier I did mention if you're low testosterone, you're much more prone to insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, um, increased inflammation in the body, increased cholesterol. Um, and increased risk of ischemic heart disease. Um, so how do we treat? Um, we supplement with a, a gel. Um, there's some cautions um, with that, but it, it is useful for um, some men. There's no shots or anything involved. You rub the gel on your shoulders and upper arms in the morning. You have to be careful though to wash your hands very well or use gloves because the testosterone uh, can be spread to children, wives, and pets even. Um, it takes about an hour for it to get absorbed. So I usually tell um, guys to put it on in the morning after a shower. Um, if they're going to be near children, to put in a t-shirt and make sure they wash their hands very well. It does take about an hour to get absorbed. The problem with the gel for some people is about 20% um, of my patients converted into estrogen through aromatization. And then and their numbers actually don't get better. So we want to do follow-ups, follow the labs. And if the numbers aren't improved, I will talk that patient into um, trying injectable testosterone. It's a shot, but I've actually taught a lot of people, uh, men and women, to give shots that never thought they could. Testosterone by injection, you will feel better with it. You will get um, very good levels with it. So what about injectable testosterone? The old way was using about one cc or 200 milligrams a week. Some places actually even use one shot every two weeks. Well, what happens with one big shot is you get too much in the beginning, um, a very high level, and then by, by day six and seven, your levels are very low. Um, so a newer way that I've been teaching men to do is a small injection three times a week using a um, um, diabetic size syringe using two tenths of a cc on average give or take everybody uh, needs to have their levels uh, adjusted but two tenths three times a week so now you're using 60 percent of the total dose but you get much better undulating therapeutic blood levels um, using a lot less and now instead of a big shot in the butt use a tiny injection um, in the thigh where there's hardly any nerves and it's very easy to do that and and we will teach you how to do that and patients just feel better with the injection. Another thing, another way to give testosterone that works very well is pellets. It, um, and I've done a lot of that. It's a small surgical incision in the buttock and uh, using a trocar introducing little pellets anywhere from 8 to 12 pellets in the buttock and these last anywhere from three to five months. So patients need this maybe twice a year and maybe for one month in, in between to, so you don't get so many um, procedures a year is using a gel or injectable for the month period of time in between. Um, this works very well. This copies nature um, perfectly. I've had that done myself. Uh, I've used all three techniques and the pellets were wonderful. I just don't have somebody in the office now to do that, so I've been using the injectable. Um, so those are the three main ways to do uh, injectable or the testosterone. What about side effects? A common one is acne, especially younger men getting acne on the back, um, oily skin. Um, for ladies, um, to digress for a minute, I'm going to talk more in a minute about uh, the benefits for ladies, is increased uh, body hair, which is very unpleasant for a female, and we'll talk about that. Another common side effect is testicular shrinkage, especially if the dose is therapeutic. There's a very easy way that I have, and very successful, and uh, very physiologic, is to use HCG, which is human chorionic gonadotropin. A small shot of that twice a week protects 
protects testicular size, also um, enhances the testosterone production. Another side effect though is male pattern baldness. This is from DHT and there are ways to block that. Another common um, side effect is feminizing features from too much estrogen. Um, male gynecomastia um, and even being very sensitive, like crying at movies, that's a side effect of too much estrogen. So we want to watch those things and there's ways to, to block that. Um, and we can use medicines or um, supplements to block this es extra estrogen. Um, other common side effects, too much testosterone can cause an inappropriate sex drive, inappropriate aggressive irritability, um, angry, road rage kind of things. Those are common signs of too much. I actually even had one patient who said, my wife doesn't want me to come see you anymore. You made me too angry. And I said, well, just, you got too much testosterone on board. We lowered the dose and he did fine because it made him feel so much better. Um, Aromatization, as I mentioned, it's common. We can give a supplement called Myomen, give you some zinc, um, or treat with a medication like Arimidex if that's an issue. Earlier I mentioned uh, the mainstream topical um, hormone replacement therapies of Androgel, Testim. Um, these, you need to use a ton of them. Um, the cost is prohibitive, $700 to $1,200 a month, and they're essentially useless. The androderm patches have very low potency, uh, very um, poor efficacy. Um, the cost is 280 to 350 a month for a teeny dose. Rashes are common and they just don't work very well. And I did mention the best ways are with either the gel or injectable or even pellets. Um, this is pretty interesting. What about testosterone as a male contraceptive? They did a study a couple years ago in China giving young men a dose of 500 milligrams. They used a testosterone undecanoate, which we don't have here in this country, so it lasts longer than, than normal, but it's not a depo testosterone. But in the study of over a thousand men, the um, lack of pregnancy was at over 99%, and it's very reversible. Um, some men would even like a male contraceptive, um, knowing who would like a way to feel terrific, happy, strong, energetic, and uh, also have uh, protection for birth control. And it's very reversible. In all the studies, 99.9% um, .9 of men um, on stopping the testosterone went back to being very fertile. Um, What about cancer? There was an old misunderstanding that testosterone causes prostate cancer. Um, a lot of work done by uh, Dr. Morgan Thaler from Harvard, a urologist, a leading urologist, is teaching other urologists, and this is catching on, but it's not fully um, appreciated yet, that testosterone is not associated with uh, prostate cancer. Rather, what we know is that a very low level of testosterone is associated with much higher risks of prostate cancer along with much worse types of prostate cancer. Um, a study was done in 2012, how it ever got approved, I'm not sure, um, but 13 men with prostate cancer were treated with testosterone and they were followed closely with no worsening sequela or increase of their prostate cancer. Um, so it's not about cancer um, at all. Um, another thing that I'm getting asked a lot, there, it's what about testosterone being dangerous for cardiovascular um, health. Last November, November 6, there was an article in JAMA, the Journal of American Medical Association, that um, had the headline that testosterone therapy increases cardiovascular events. This was a study of over 8,000 patients, but and they all had testosterone levels less than 300. Only 1,200 of these men were treated with hormone replacement therapy. And what the study showed was that patients that got testosterone only had about 1% incidence of heart attacks, where patients without the testosterone that were treated had a increased risk close to 6%. Um, the difference uh, on the numbers was three to four times higher in incidence of heart attack 
when treated with testosterone. What the study actually shows is testosterone therapy is very beneficial for the heart, decreasing death, heart attack, and strokes, which is really misunderstood. The conclusions on the study were poorly analyzed, the math was done very incorrectly, and it was very erroneous, the whole study. The news got a hold of this, and then the lawyers got a hold of it, and so there's a lot of news out there how dangerous um, testosterone is, when in fact it's the opposite, it's very healthy. So with prostate cancer, testosterone does not make it worse. Um, it's actually protective and decreases it. It's other things that we don't fully understand. I believe it's from um, other byproducts such as estrogen, maybe DHT, but these things aren't known. But we now know that it's not testosterone that causes the prostate cancer. Um, we do know, though, that synthetic animal testosterone products are terrible. That's where testosterone got a lot of its bad name. Um, testosterone from horses and bulls and um, other types of testosterone, um, along with methyl testosterone, which is a synthetic testosterone that had been used in the past. Methyl testosterone is known to cause liver cancer, just like female estrogen, Premarin is very dangerous for a female. These things are bad. Uh, we want bioidentical hormones. What is a bioidentical hormone? That's a hormone that actually is the same thing that's in our body. These are usually from plant sources, not animal, and they're made into the same molecule that's in the body as opposed to synthetic things. Um, just like all our drugs, these drugs are things, <laughs> drug companies can't patent a natural molecule. They have to tweak it and add things onto the molecule to make it patentable. So all our drugs are space age molecules, things that the body has never seen before. And it's no wonder that there's so many side effects with so many drugs. There is a place, I think, for some, but uh, my goal and philosophy is to try and copy nature and use natural um, techniques and therapies. Another thing that comes up a lot is Steroid. I don't want steroids, doctor. Well, th there's a big misunderstanding on the word steroid. There's good steroids and there's bad steroids. It's the bad ones that have the bad connotation. All our hormones are steroidal structures, cholesterol, testosterone, growth hormone, DHEA, thyroid. All of these are steroids. So the point is there's good steroids and there's bad ones. So the, the concept of uh, taking a steroid um, should not be misunderstood as being bad as such, unless it's an unnatural synthetic animal type that's, uh, that your body doesn't recognize. Um, so what about testosterone for females? Testosterone um, goes low, um, usually in the 40s. Uh, for a female, um, her ovaries are making um, progesterone, estrogen, and testosterone. Usually progesterone goes low first, then testosterone, lastly estrogen, and that's when the periods stop. Testosterone, though, is very beneficial for a female. All ladies, when they lack testosterone, start going into osteoporosis. So testosterone is one of the key things to maintain bone health and bone density. Testosterone does a lot of other things for a lady, though, as well. Testosterone is crucial for muscles, for energy, strength, endurance. It's also very important for the brain, for memory, cognitive function, mood. Actually, earlier I meant to mention that the um, grumpy old man um, can probably be, pre be prevented by um, um, treating, or reversed at least, with treating with testosterone. Testosterone for the female is also good for the heart, protects the heart against heart attack and arrhythmias. It's good for the cholesterol profile. Um, it um, is good for the immune system, and it's the only thing that really affects libido. Um, so that's the main things that testosterone does for the, for the female. And it's important to replace that if it's low. And it's a test that we do and interpret. And again, it's you know, not... See, I often get told by um, patients that um, my numbers are, are in the normal range, but why do I feel so lousy or so bad? And that's this whole thing that we want to be optimal in interpreting the numbers. Furthermore, the numbers that are, are assessed are only from, they're already skewed. Only sick people go to the doctor to get tests. Um, healthy, normal people don't go and aren't even part of the um, skewing of the numbers. So the numbers are skewed. So understanding normal is very confusing. 
Um, I want to talk about the difference between, I grew up on a farm, and the difference between a steer and a bull. Um, a bull, this muscular um, beast that stands there with a very determined look in his eye, um, as compared to a steer that you can walk up to, pet, push over with a small push. Um, most guys want to be more like bulls and not like steers, so the testosterone does those kind of things too. Um, another important thing that I did want to talk to you while, while I'm here today, tonight, is I wish I could treat more elderly. They are so severe in their lack of hormones. The, the, the few patients that I've had, I've had the most dramatic results with the replacing hormones in them. I wish we could get into nursing homes and things like that. Um, older people just don't get exposed and for various reasons don't seek out um, this kind of care, but I wish they could and would, and I just throw that out to encourage more of that. Hormones make things go. So get your hormones checked and see where you're at. That is really what I wanted to talk about on, on health, male health, um, and wellness. Um, and now we want to discuss some of the new things that we do here in the office. We have some wonderful new therapies that um, we're introducing and, and using here in our office. I go to a lot of talks. I love this kind of medicine. I feel that when I had to quit the emergency room that... Um, um, I reinvented myself and I really enjoy this kind of medicine um, and going to a lot of talks I've picked up a lot of interesting things. One is this new machine that we have called pulsed electromagnetic therapy. I think we have a slide of that so you can see the machine. This has been overwhelming in response. We'll give uh, free treatment to many patients uh, when they're here if they're having any pain and across the board it decreases achiness and pain. Um, pulsed electromagnetic therapy. And I've done a lot of work with a Dr. Bonley, a dentist, but he's actually been the head of the North American Magnetic Association. He um, has a mattress system that helps replace the magnetism um, that we've lost. It's great for bones. It decreases achiness and soreness, um, part of anti-aging. He also has developed an electron um, um, magnet of about 10,000 gauze that he has used um, to treat um, many regenerate many um, tissues and decreasing the healing of uh, fractures and ligaments in a, in a short amount of time. Um, and in my um, studies I've come across um, this new pulsed electromagnetic therapy where we have a machine that's 19,000 gauze. Over the last 4,000 years the magnetic force in the earth has decreased immensely. And these forces are very important for wellness. So by adding in this therapy, um, the pulsed electromagnetic um, field therapy um, increases circulation, decreases inflammation, um, many of the kinins that cause inflammation and improves bone density, increases healing of bones and ligaments very quickly, much more, at least 50% faster than normal. It increases stamina, has powerful anti-aging properties. Um, actually, I tore um, a, a ligament in my wrist, and normally that kind of injury, in my experience, um, having done a lot of athletics, um, probably would have taken 8 to 12 weeks to heal. Um, we had just got this new machine, the pulse electromagnetic um, therapy machine that has coils or a mat that you lay on. I use that machine 30 minutes, two different days, and I improved the healing, plus the, the hot laser, I use that as well, which I'm going to talk about next. Um, I improved the healing, 80% improvement in, in a matter of four days, which was pretty shocking to me. Um, the pulse electromagnetic therapy enhances the immune system, um, it decreases pain, stiffness, swelling, inflammation, edema, spasms, stress, bruises, contusions. Uh, we have a slide that um, I'll put up and you can read that. So the pulsed electromagnetic therapy is fascinating um, technology. And I wish I could afford one at home. The doctor that taught me about it, Dr. Gary Gordon, he uses it every day. And it has very nice anti-aging properties. If the price comes down, I'm sure we'd all like one of these machines when we learn about it. So that's the pulse magnetic therapy that we're doing um, on that. Um, one of my patients, I didn't know much about lasers. One of my patients um, 
is a head fellow for a BioLase hot laser um, therapy company. Um, they do a lot of work in the dental field, but now they're switching into um, uh, the medical field. Um, I happened to mention that my wife was having a lot of neck pain, and he said, come down and we'll give you a treatment. As a matter of fact, there's a doctor up in Santa Monica that I'd like you to go and see, and we did. So we went um, up to Santa Monica to this chiropractor that's a top um, therapist um, for treating um, many athletes, including the U.S. Olympic team. He was actually hired by the U.S. Olympic team um, when, with the Olympics, and he was doing therapies all day long to help these athletes with their um, injuries. Um, there's also another um, local chiropractor that has the machine and um, I work closely with her. She's uh, used this machine daily in helping a lot of people with the inflammation in the body, bursitis, different injuries. Also went on a tour through the factory down in Irvine. Um, so we have a slide on our hot laser machine. This laser machine does many, many things as well, kind of complementary to the pulsed electromagnetic therapy. Um, but they have cases where they've reversed um, the paralysis uh, of Bell's palsy. It's terrific for peripheral neuropathy. There's a protocol for acne. The, the laser, this hot laser beam, actually kills all infections. So there's a protocol to kill um, the bacteria of acne and reverse acne. Uh, therapy for treating warts. There's a therapy for killing um, fungus uh, in toenails. Um, and you get a nice warm feeling with it and a nice relaxed feeling, which really reduces um, inflammation, increases circulation, decreases bruising. Um, you even used it a couple times on patients that had um, poor veins when we were starting IVs here in the office to enhance that circulation. So many nice things with this hot laser machine. Another machine that we have, and uh, we'll put a slide up for that, is external counter pulsation. This is a great big bed machine. It's a very cumbersome kind of looking unit, but very um, effective at treating hypertension, cardiovascular, um, like cardiac output um, to improve that, peripheral edema. You do need about 30 treatments for that. Um, you can call our office if you're interested in that. Um, very, very useful. We also are doing a lot of ozone treatments. Um, Ozone, when we'll take your blood out and ozonate it and infuse it back in. It's very effective at killing many infections and oxygenating the blood. Um, very, very useful. We can talk more about that one another time. Another comment I was going to make is we're doing a lot of ultrasounds here in our office. Um, we're doing ultrasounds for thyroid and cardiovascular plaque. When we see plaque, I have a protocol to reverse that. Um, so for those things, um, we can also check those kinds of things out. That's some of the new techniques and, and procedures and equipment that we're using in our office, which is very exciting for me. Um, so if you have any questions on that, or any of the questions on male health, or any questions in general, um, please call our office or write. Um, we have a question from the online audience. Good. Um, as a younger man, man, are there ways to boost testosterone naturally if my levels are low? Um, what What do you recommend in terms of supplementation? I wish there were supplements that um, would uh, raise the testosterone. Um, but I haven't found ways that really improve that. Um, if, a, if the testosterone's low, um, we need to replace it, and that's how you're going to feel the best. And you want to do it naturally with the ways that I said, not using synthetic things off the street and that kind of thing. A lot of young guys are low in testosterone, though, and they maybe don't realize it. Um, a lot of depressed young males, um, um, antisocial, poor muscle tone, muscle develop, and lift up their shirt and there's just no muscle there. Um, these fellas need to have their testosterone checked and evaluated um, by somebody that knows what they're doing. Another question. Um, I have no symptoms of low testosterone. However, my levels on the lab results show that they are. Should I be concerned? Um, it depends. Um, <laughs> Everybody is different, so it's a clinical diagnosis. If you have no symptoms, um, is it because you maybe aren't aware that you're lacking some of these things? Um, 
a lot of us guys aren't very good at getting checked or realizing maybe how we should feel. Um, and it's important to check your levels if your endurance is a, a great question a great way for a guy to know if his testosterone is lower than it used to be or should be is if you find yourself asking the question I used to if you find yourself saying that at all I used to party better I used to hit the golf ball farther I used to stay up later I used to study better I used to if, if you say I used to I would predict your testosterone is going to be a lot lower than it should be and that can be replaced Dr. Whiteman, as a woman, how do I address to the men in my life that they may need testosterone without feeling like I'm attacking their manhood? Excellent question. Um, a lot of guys think that unless they um, can't have an erection, their testosterone is fine. Uh, a lot of the things that I mentioned in the talk about symptoms of being low. I used to do something. Um, just I have less endurance. I have less stamina. I have... Um, um, I'm getting diabetes now, my insulin's up, I'm gaining weight and I can't seem to lose it, I'm getting weight around the middle. This is probably an imbalance of estrogen and testosterone. Um, so you know, us guys aren't as good, uh, like I mentioned earlier, getting help. Um, and I also mentioned that ladies are 99% intuitive about their guy lacking testosterone. Um, and there's very safe ways, and just because one way to do it is a shot doesn't mean us guys aren't very good at shots generally, so that and we're fearful of that. Um, but if we aren't feeling as good as we think we should, or others are telling us that uh, maybe we're more grumpy than we used to be, or if you see uh, a guy coming home and he's very tired as soon as he hits the couch, he, or he gets home, he hits the couch and falls asleep, his testosterone's probably low. Um, so these are some of the things um, that you could um, share with him and um, see if he's interested in getting checked. You also spoke of some benefits of women, um, reaping some benefits from taking testosterone therapy. What form do you recommend for women? I usually have them use a cream. That usually is very effective. Again, um, too much can cause acne. But a sm And one of the other side effects for women, and they'll often tell me that they don't want it because they're afraid of getting facial um, hair growth. They don't want a mustache or, or chin hair sort of thing. That's a tough one because that does happen. It's one of the side effects. If a lady needs estrogen, I do have a little trick where you rub estrogen on that area of the face. The estrogen isn't designed for the face, but a little bit there will counteract that. And when I explain all the benefits of testosterone to a lady and let her make a choice, I said one of the side effects might be some extra hair growth. But if, if I protected your, your bones and improved your libido and helped all these other things with better mood, better brain function, better memory, um, then you could elect to do laser treatments, for example, for the hair. Um, or you could decide you don't want to do it at all. Um, and most ladies don't get that as a, as a side effect, but uh, some have. So there's ways to deal with it if you get it. Um, but the benefits outweigh that. And I know cosmetic things are very important. Um, so it's something to think about and you have a choice. Dr. Whiteman, you talked a little bit about when you're taking testosterone that sometimes they convert to either estrogen or dihydrotestosterone. Are there symptoms that men look for in that or is it only looking at blood work to determine? No, definitely symptoms. Um, male pattern hair loss is about DHT. Prostate hypertrophy is involved with DHT. Um, so I want to watch those numbers, and if those are side effects, um, there's ways that I have to block the DHT. The aromatization of, um, into estrogen, the symptoms of that are um, feminizing features such as male um, breasts, um, being much more emotional, increased fat uh, around the middle. Um, that's uh, something we want to watch on blood tests. If a patient starts experiencing those symptoms, that's the first warning that those are happening and we want to block that extra estrogen production. Dr. Wayman, we have a few questions about the new therapies at Holtworth Medical Group. Okay. Um, one person asked if they had an acute injury of the shoulder, how many treatments of the pulsed electromagnetic therapy would they need? 
Um, very good question. One treatment won't do it. Typically, it takes five or ten treatments um, to reverse that damage um, there. And uh, the, there might be a combination of using hot laser treatment as well with that. Um, and again, the one treatment doesn't do it. Um, and it's uh, related to symptoms. Um, everybody's a little different. And another person wants to know what exactly on the pulse electromagnetic therapy, what is it doing to the body or the cells? Very complicated. A lot of um, different biochemical and cellular um, functions are altered. Um, energies increase, circulation is increased, allowing the body to heal and increase um, um, circulation, allowing blood cells to get in there to do their healing effects, um, reducing inflammation in those areas. It's also changing the magnetic. All cells communicate through magnetic energy and it just enhances that whole communication between all cells. All 70 trillion cells in our body communicate through electromagnetic um, waves. Um, so it enhances all of that. And another person wants to know if they came in with an injury, how would you know or how would you would you recommend both the laser and the pulse electromagnetic therapy, or would one be better than the other? I think they're both very helpful. Um, both are very good. Um, I like both of them, um, and so it maybe be a combination of both, um, depending on, on the injury. When I injured my wrist, like I mentioned, I did use both therapies, and I found both to be very effective. They do work differently, but they end up doing similar kinds of things. The hot laser beam increases circulation so you kind of get some local redness there um, allowing circulation to improve whereas with the pulsed electromagnetic therapy that's pulsed waves that are going in doing all the things like I just mentioned. Last question. How does a guy know if their testosterone is getting low? Very good question. I like that. I kind of like to joke often that grumpy old men wouldn't exist if we, if I could fix their testosterone. That whole movie probably wouldn't even happen uh, unless I give too much and then that can cause irritability, but that's a different issue. The biggest way I think for a, a guy to know that his testosterone is lower is if I hear or he catches himself saying, I used to, almost anything, I used to do something better. Um, that's kind of a take-home message. If you find yourself saying that, it probably means your testosterone's lower than it should be and, and um, ought to be evaluated to see if it should be replaced. Um, so, very good question. Um, so, thank you all for listening. I hope this was informative, maybe a little bit uh, thought-provoking. I encourage you all to optimal health and not to accept mediocrity. Thank you and good night. I hope you found this webcast informative. All this information will be available to view again. If you have any further questions on male health, feel free to call us and we'd be very happy to help you. Thank you for joining us and have a good evening.